How fast should you be running at High Rocks? Before I ran my first race, I thought I might be able to run the one kilometer splits at around my five kilometer pace. It turns out I was very, very wrong. In this video, I'll share with you how to work out the pace that you should be running at High Rocks. But first, we'll take a look at whether you should start slow and finish fast, start fast and finish slow, or whether you should try and run consistently throughout. Okay, so in the slide on the screen, on the left there, we're looking at how athletes place their runs at the World Championships in Las Vegas in 2022. And we're looking at runs two to seven because runs one and eight in High Rocks are slightly different distance. And time differential essentially means the the, the difference between their fastest run and their slowest run. And you can see that the top five in the elite race, so that's the best of the best in High Rocks, had a very little time differential. So there was around 17 seconds difference between their fastest run and their slowest run on average. Then the rest of the elites in the elite race, <clears throat> they had a slightly bigger time differential. So they're closer to 26 seconds. And then the rest of the athletes on the day, so not in the elite race, they had a much bigger time differential. So they had much less consistent running splits than the elites did. And you can see that trend continues in London 2022, which at the time was the, the biggest High Rocks event that had taken place. And those pros who finished on the podium had, uh, again, around a 17 second time differential. And for a more average athlete on the day, it was much longer, around 35 seconds. So in both instances, those who performed best ran a much more consistent splits overall. So like I said, that's runs two to seven looked at. But how about the first run? Do people go out fast on that first run? Well, you can see here, again, in the World Championships in Las Vegas, those who finished in the top five of the elite race, they spent much longer on their first run as a percentage of their overall average running time than the rest of the elites, who in turn, spent longer on their first run uh, than the average pro on the day. And that again happens in London where those pros who finished on the podium spent longer on their first run as a percentage of their overall running time than the average pro on the day. So those who performed best didn't go out as fast relatively as those who performed slower overall. So from what we've looked at so far, it looks like the better performing High Rocks athletes managed to maintain more consistent pacing throughout the race. And if we look outside of the sport of High Rocks into more general running races, when Kipchoge done his two hour marathon, every single one kilometer split time for the whole of the marathon was between uh, two minutes 48 per kilometer and two minutes 52 per kilometer. So he studied it. He believes that consistent pacing throughout is important if you're going to achieve something as incredible as a two hour marathon. And we can see similar with the half marathon world records for men and women. They both paced their runs very, very consistently throughout. Okay, so it seems like consistent pacing at High Rocks is very, very important. But how do we know what pace we need to be running at? Well, there's a, a few things that we can do. Before we get into that though, can I just remind you to please subscribe to our channel so we can keep you updated with all our High Rocks tips, interviews, news, and more. And then also, if you're interested in coaching or nutrition for High Rocks, then check out our website at rockslife.com coaching or rockslife.com nutrition. Well, first and perhaps most obviously is purely from experience. If you've competed in High Rocks before, you'll know your total running time. And that can be used as a starting point for working out how fast you want to run the next time you race, taking into account any improvements that you've made since then, and taking into account whether you managed to maintain consistent splits at that pace or whether you fatigued a lot as the race went on. If you haven't done a race before, then it is worth trying out a simulation in your gym, if possible, before the event, and seeing how you go from a pacing perspective that way. It's almost impossible to completely replicate a high rocks, but if you do have access to the equipment, then doing at least one simulation before the race can be worthwhile. I wanna give you a bit more guidance though than just telling you to work it out for yourself. So as a starting point, if you know how quickly you might run a certain distance in, that can be useful. So to give some indication, I wouldn't expect your one kilometer running splits in High Rocks to be aligned with your five kilometer pace. It will most certainly be slower than that. 
It will also likely be slower than your 10 kilometer pace. I'm sure there are some athletes in high rocks who run around that sort of pace, but it's not common. It's gonna be more aligned with your half marathon or even your marathon pace, depending on your running experience. I know that's not hugely prescriptive, but hopefully it gives you a ballpark pace to be thinking about. If you have run a high rocks before, I'd be interested to know how your running splits stacked up against a road run or a track run, for example. Let us know in the comments. And while you're there, please remember to subscribe to our channel so we can keep you up to date with all our high rocks news, tips, and interviews. One other test that I periodically perform to help me determine my pace in a high rocks is to run one kilometre on a track at a certain heart rate. So I will run five kilometres on a running track, maintaining my heart rate at 140 beats per minute, which is about 75% of my max heart rate. And I'll keep a note of the time that I cover the five kilometre distance in. Over time, I obviously want to see that time reducing as a sign that my running ability is improving. Then a few minutes after completing that five kilometer run, I'll also run one kilometer, 155 beats per minute, which is around 85% of my max heart rate. Again, I wanna see progress here in the time I complete this in, but I also find that the time that this takes is roughly speaking a good pace for me per kilometer at high rocks. Now that might not work for everyone, and with it being determined by heart rate, there are a number of factors that can play a part in the result, such as temperature, levels of fatigue, what I've eaten, and so on. But I do consider it a pretty good gauge. It's also worth saying that I use a heart rate strap for this as opposed to a heart rate watch, because they tend to be much more accurate. Okay, so we know you want to run consistently throughout the race, and hopefully by now you've got a pretty good idea of what sort of pace you want to run at but now you need to go and do that, and that's where it can get tricky. The most effective way I've found to pace myself at High Rocks is by using the lap functionality on my watch. As I leave the rock zone, I hit the lap timer button. I then keep a close eye on my time so that I finish the run at predetermined running split time. This also helps to minimize the chances of the surprisingly common mistake of running too many or too few laps of the track. Now that might sound obvious so far, but I'll also know how my target time translates into how fast I want to run each lap of the track. I used the venue floor plan to help me do this in the days prior to the race. Let's say that one kilometer is two laps of the track. If I want to hit a running split of four minutes 30 per kilometer, it means I need to run one lap of the track in about two minutes, 15 seconds. So from the moment I leave the rock zone to the first time I pass the rock zone exit, I'll be aiming to do it in roughly two minutes 15. This is something I'll keep an eye on during my runs and effectively means I'm keeping an eye on my pace throughout each kilometer run as opposed to just finishing the run and realizing I've gone too quick or too slow. You also need to consider that the first run can be shorter or longer depending on where the start line is. I'll calculate in advance how long I want that first run to take. If I estimate the first run to be 100 meters shorter, for example, then I'd be looking for my first run to be 90% of my normal running split times. If my one kilometer time aim is four minutes 30, then that first run at 90% would be four minutes and three seconds. I appreciate I'm a bit of a numbers geek and some of this stuff might come more naturally to me than others, but I do think it is worth spending some time in training working this sort of thing out so that when it comes to race day, you are much better prepared to pace your running. And that's it, hopefully it's helped. To summarize, you want to try and run as consistently as possible through the race, not go out too fast, and determine using a few different methodologies the most appropriate pace for you throughout the race. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Please remember to subscribe to our channel. If you do need any help with your training or your nutrition for High Rocks, then check out rockslife.com now, and I will hopefully talk to you again soon.